Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video was not planned. Okay, it was planned, but not planned to turn out like this. However, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Lately, I've been following a few Skillshare classes by an amazing watercolor and gouache artist, and she got me hooked. I basically want to watch all her classes now, so I asked my Instagram followers which class to follow next, and they chose this one. This is what the final result should look like. An amazing night sky with light green northern lights, very smoothly blended colors and some snowy mountains in the front. Absolutely beautiful. Keep this picture in mind. Mine turn out different, so stay tuned and watch me fail. I won't be going into too much detail on how to paint this picture because that's what Skillshare is for. And no, this video is not sponsored. I wish it would be, but no. Actually, I've been using Skillshare for quite a while now and I plan to film a video on how easy it is to follow along and how amazing the result turned out and um, yeah, <laughs> even if I wanted to show you how to paint this amazing picture, I couldn't. Here's a little disclaimer. I want to make clear that the class I followed is absolutely amazing. The artist is super talented, knows what she's doing and explains everything really, really well. All failure displayed in this video, and I felt miserably, is completely my own fault. But we will see. <laughs> so, as I said, I'm not going into too much detail on how to paint it, that's what Skillshare is for, but what you need to know in order to understand why I failed so badly is that you're supposed to use the wet and wet technique. If you want to know more about that, feel free to check out my video on how to paint the Disney castle. There I'm explaining this technique. And what you also need to know is that I'm using the Winsor & Newton Cotman Health Pen watercolor set. Some of you might know where this is going. <laughs> In this tutorial you're supposed to work with cobalt green and I don't have cobalt green since it's not really common in the standard sets as I learned. By the way, this is something that the artist takes into account in every single Skillshare class. If she uses a color that is not common, she explains how you can create it with colors that you are very likely to have. In this particular class, she showed a few different ways how to mix a similar color and I chose to go with phthalo green as a base color. I mixed it with a white watercolor as I was supposed to and was pretty happy to see that it actually looked like cobalt green and pretty vibrant until I applied it. Oh my gosh, where is the pigment? And it got even worse when it dried. But this was not even the worst part. The worst part was using Prussian blue. I love this color. It's gorgeous. But where is the pigment? I activated the colors before starting to paint and put some drops of water on it. But as soon as I touched the wet paper, it didn't look vibrant at all. When I swatched it on dry paper, the pigmentation was fine, but on wet paper, the pigment just seemed to float away. In the past, I have not worked that much with Prussian Blue, and I'm pretty happy with most of the colors in the Winsor & Newton set when using the wet and wet technique, but what the heck. Well, I thought, maybe there's a secret to using Prussian Blue, like stirring in the pan clockwise when loading your brush instead of counterclockwise or something. So I talked to a fellow art friend from Instagram who has the same set and she told me she had the same problem. Which was pretty nice to hear because at that point I thought I was just too dumb to use it. And yes, I know it's easy to blame your own failure on the materials you use, but I feel like these Winsor & Newton watercolors are not the best choice for the project. It was so hard to load the brush with enough pigment and blend it all together, so it wasn't fun working with them. To be honest, I feel really sorry for my paintbrush right now. In the end, I just kept rubbing the bristles on the colors so hard because I was desperate to get some nice pigment on the paper. I know in general, it's easier to get vibrant colors when using watercolors from tubes and not pans, but still, a little more pigment would have helped a lot. I'm sure that a better artist would have gotten an amazing result even with the Cotman colors, but it was just not fun. I recently watched a video by Marco Chino where she said that you should definitely invest in some higher quality watercolors because otherwise you'll get frustrated. And now I totally understand what she was saying. I was so frustrated. And to be honest, what you're watching here is my third try. 
I modified some steps like using phthalo green without white to get a more vibrant color and more or less dab the paint onto the paper instead of using strokes but I still didn't like it. I even cut off the bottom part of the painting because I hated it that much. But that's all part of the creative process, right? Even when you fail, at least you learn something from it. For example, how not to do it. Let me know in the comments about your most frustrating projects so that I don't feel like a complete failure. <laughs> if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.